Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. This is a compilation video, okay? But what we're going to do in this video is take my very first spring and Easter videos and I'm going to watch them and comment. All right, so we're going to start off with a spring box. This is my old intro. This was like the very first of my intros and I had the little cute overlay. Cute. Okay. So the first thing I noticed in this video is that uh, I remember I was using a cell phone, I do believe, and the editor that I had did not use the same type of transitions. So the, you're going to see the camera kind of move around a little bit. And um, as it is with new video creators, I guess, so much was focused on me trying to do like my crafts and get the crafts right that I really had not spent very much time learning how to edit. So, uh, yeah, I see lots of comments from people who watch my old videos and uh, give me advice on how I should be editing those. And just so you know, I have learned a lot um, along the way. If you've been following me, you know I've learned a lot along the way. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use some burlap here. This video actually was a pretty much... Uh, it had a lot of good views on it for a little channel. This is back when I was only getting like, I don't know, 80 to 100 and something views on my videos. I mean, I was a baby video creator, a baby crafter, okay? But even then, I was protecting my fingers, y'all. Check it out. So, this is my very first Surebonder glue gun. I'm now on number three. It has been almost four years. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah. We've come a long way, baby. Okay, see, I could edit all that out. Nobody wants to see me do any of that. That could have saved a little time, right? And y'all, in the beginning, I would do like one craft per video. I was like trying to keep all my videos under 15 minutes. Yeah, those were the days. I could have saved a lot of time just taking that out, couldn't I? Okay, so I am going to be just chit chatting along in this video if that's not something that you want to hear then you do not have to watch this and if you're somebody who is subscribed you don't like this type of video you certainly do not have to watch no worries i just want you to see that when you start crafting it's different you know you keep practicing and you keep doing it for a while and you're gonna get better and i'm just showing you that that is the case with me as well right See, I'm even kind of at the very bottom, which, yes, I do know, sometimes I still get out of range with my camera, uh, but, you know, you live, you learn, and I'm trying to, trying to make improvements as I go. Did y'all know, even with me having almost 70,000 subscribers, I still do everything on my own on this video. I come up with the content, I create the videos, I, well, I create the crafts, then I create the videos, edit the videos, upload the videos, add music, add clips, add my own little pieces that I make up. I design all of my artwork for my intros and my, when the screens kind of transition, um, I do all of that. That is all stuff that I have taught myself along the way. If you are watching this video because you want to be a YouTuber, there are lots of people who can give you more advice uh, as far as that goes, but what I can do is encourage you if it's something that you're passionate about. It's just something that you think you might want to do as a hobby. You got to start someplace, right? When I started doing my crafts and I started doing this channel, I did not necessarily know where my stopping point was like would there be a point where I just wouldn't want to do it anymore where I would get burned out where you know where okay when I get to a thousand subscribers I'm done I, I notice a lot of youtubers quitting but I encourage you to keep going I've just kept going I just keep looking forward and you know now YouTube is a full-time job for me and you know, if there's something that you want to do, just go with it. But keep educating yourself about how you can make your channel better. How you can, you know, create relationships with people. I'm really kind of introverted until I get to know people. 
and um, that's why I really don't show my face in my videos because you know I don't necessarily want mm, that kind of attention I guess I don't know I know I should though because it's easier for people to relate to you if you show your face so I probably should do that but my channel is just about crafting so I craft with my hands not face so this is why I do it that way anyway I know I'm gonna get some comments on here about it being just I talk too much and that sort of thing but this is just gonna be a chatty video y'all so I don't hold you to stay here this entire video if you don't want to I do still have my questions for the Q&A. I am going to do a live Q&A for that, and I'm going to do it in March when I get back. Um, I know y'all are probably thinking, yeah, she said at the first of the year she was going to do it, and she didn't do it. Well, I'm still collecting questions, believe it or not. And I just thought that doing a live video, once I am freed up, right now I'm busy because we're preparing for the cruise, and it is not far off. Um, so I'm focusing on that and working ahead and I've got videos ready for y'all for when I'm gone. So y'all be sure that you come over and watch. Even though I'm gone, my videos are still going to be there. My daughter's helping me a little bit to try to keep up with comments and things like that. So, you know, if you don't hear from me when I get back, I'll address um, any questions or comments. That'll be in March. Okay, so I love the idea on this craft of using the beads in between the blocks. You can use any little blocks and you can actually buy little, uh, you could get a piece of wood and chop it into pieces if you have a saw or somebody who can saw for you. You can use children's blocks, maybe that you get at a garage sale or at Goodwill or any thrift store. And heck, even if you've got a grandchild who is outgrowing their, their toys, you know, and mom's just going to give them to someone else, you know, if you can use them, go ahead and get in there and use them. You got to think outside of the box and that's what I try to do on the channel. I want to encourage you to not spend a fortune, but to think outside of the box. I see again there, I'm way out of view. And what I'm doing actually is trying to decide how I want this to fit. Do I want it to be centered? Do I want it off to the side? Do I want to put it on the front or directly on the top? I'm just showing you in the video uh, how I'm working through it. Now when I do my videos, I leave it in if I think it's pertinent and might be helpful to you because I always want you to make it your own. I like to give you some options and show you how you can do that because some people say I have no idea where to start I don't know I have no idea so I just got the glue out with the the tweezers just cleaned it up a little bit that's easy right that was a pretty easy little craft to do there again I had I didn't have a place where I could show my videos so what I'm using is a arm over the table and it's like a tripod or a monopod and I'm just kind of swirling it back and forth. So it's kind of bumpy and I have an overlay which is getting in the way. I should, you know, I don't do that now because it kind of interrupts the picture and a lot of people like to really get a good idea. Hey, if you want to subscribe, I encourage you to do so. Put out videos on Mondays and Thursdays at six o'clock. And I always encourage you to make it your own because I believe in you and I know you can do it. All right, so now we're moving on to a wreath. And see that little grainy greenery right there with the little dots on it? I still have that, y'all. I've used it so many times. I think I finally donated these because I used those many times. And then I got a fern. I love using ferns and, and those greens uh, in the springtime. More so than flowers, I guess. Now, I remembered this was a Dollar Tree sign. I went ahead and took the sander and went all over it. I'm going to do the face like that, and I did the bottom like that probably was trying to get glitter off of it got my ribbon from Dollar Tree I got some more I used to be big into like a rustic farmhouse look and uh, not as much now as I used to be but you know I like more of a woodland take now on it woodland and rustic okay so now we're going to take everything apart. I'm not going to put it in as one piece. And you know when you do this, you buy these little hanging pieces from Dollar Tree. Keep in mind that you can actually go ahead and make 
possibly three projects out of this. You have three pieces rather than just one. And of course, back then they were a dollar a piece. Now they're a dollar twenty-five. But you know, still you can think of it that way. I know at Halloween they do a lot of those little pieces that have multiple pieces, and you can just take them apart. So I'm going to sand him down just a little bit more, so it will look as faded as the bottom part. Because for me, it's some things need to be a little matchy matchy if they're all going to be on the same project. You see what I'm saying? So now all of those are matchy matchy. Now it looks like I'm going to do a little wet distressing. Probably not the proper term for it, but I am going to use a little bit of wax. My first bottle of antiquing wax, y'all. Isn't that awesome? I'm putting this on a, it looks like a baby wipe or a face wipe because I used to use those too. And then go over the entire thing, it looks like. Now I try to focus more on the edges first and then build my way you know, toward the inside, a little bit at a time. Back then, I apparently did not do it that way. Again, you live, you learn. And then we're going over to the wreath. This looks like magnolia greenery, I think. So I chose these older projects. These are the ones from 2020. And I chose these just to, for one thing, most of y'all probably haven't seen these videos. And if you did, you saw them back in the very beginning and you were one of those 80 to 100 people who watched my videos. <laughs> but um, I still think that there's value in these crafts. And I still think that if you are a new crafter, you need to see where somebody else starts off too. Because you see my projects have come a long way. But I had to start somewhere, right? We all have to start somewhere. Y'all know I love a good grapevine wreath. If you use the stems of your projects and you just poke them into the wreath rather than gluing them into the wreath or using a minimum amount of glue, then you can always reuse those wreaths. So that's another way to save money. You know, you have a wreath, one wreath that you take apart and possibly could use for several seasons. A good old round wreath is a multi-purpose tool to have. And I, I love the idea of you know being able to take that same piece and maybe even some of the same greenery and just you know change up the signs that you put on it for every season if that's all you can do and you really want to craft it try it that way all right so now i'm picking in the different types of ferns it's looking very woodland this is even the way it was for me way back when i was doing um like farmhouse stuff i've always enjoyed a lot of greenery and nature looking stuff um, it's one thing that really let me know that this is, I'm kind of in my pocket of goodness when I'm working, you know, in these types of crafts because they come to me so easily. You know, you can get a lot of inspiration in nature and they really come easily. But you can use anything you want. You can use any style of greenery. And if you're making wreaths and you don't like all the greenery then just use flowers instead you know just take the the method maybe and use that to get them in there and it looks like I was turning my leaves so that the pretty part was in the front see how easy this just picks in and then you can also take your greenery and put underneath where the wrapping is around the wreath and that makes it uh, a little more stable as well so I'm putting in these little pieces here. Yeah, I've used these pieces a lot. Maybe time to put them in the donate bucket. I'm looking at them right now over where my greenery is and they, they're still calling to me. I may use them a few more seasons, who knows? They look good in fall stuff too. See, nobody needed to watch me just tweak every single stem that I put into the wreath. I tried to get through that a little quicker for y'all now. Okay, so now it looks like we are going to put some hangers on the back. Yep, we're going to use pipe cleaners on the back. And I would use a whole pipe cleaner and cut it down now rather than cutting it like this because these look, they would not go all the way on the, around the wreath. They might go through the wreath, but... If I could get it all the way around, it would make it a little quicker than having to weave it all the way through the uh, the viney parts, if you know what I'm saying. All right, so 
I'm going to take that bunny and it looks like I'm pushing it through the wreath. It's a good thing on this wreath that it's kind of flat because it actually, I can wrap it up. But I do advise that you leave them a little long. Help yourself out so you don't have to redo it. See, I, now I can get all three pieces on the same wreath or you could separate them. And I think I'm going to make a bow. And using this green burlap ribbon or I don't know what this is we're, we're gonna call it burlap because i think that's what they call it at dollar tree i still get the green because like i said it looks good with my stuff and then there's a brown piece and then some of this really pretty this looks like it came from hobby lobby yeah uh stanley i think it is and it looks like we're gonna make a little bow here i've still got plaid ribbon and um I like the idea of using like that checked or gingham, whatever you call it. Call it. I like the idea of using it uh, in the summertime. It just reminds me of like a picnic blanket or something. Or an old diner. I don't know. You know what I mean. So I've got the three on top of each other and they're a little bit different sizes. And squeeze them up. Tie them off with a piece of jute. I still do them that way. I didn't get it tight enough. Oh, and I'm going to put a loop in the middle, looks like. Fold it over on itself and glue it, and then, yep, I'm going to glue it right across that piece of jute, which I did not get tight enough, but it's okay for this type of bow, I suppose. I work a lot harder now because over the years I've pulled many a bow apart because I am a, I'm an aggressive uh, fluffer, so yeah, I try to give myself a little more um, stability in that bow before I start fluffing away but it's a cute little bow it's not bad and I don't even think I put tails on it because I'm gonna put it on his head oh that's a lot of glue too oh now it looks like a little girl she's got a little bow on her head using a clip to hold it in place I still do that it helps you to be able to save time because you can move along to the next part oh am I putting tails on the bow what am I doing here I don't remember. I don't have this wreath anymore. I do not remember. I take my wreaths apart and my craft pieces apart after the seasons are over. There are a few things that I've kept um, and I have a glass case in here, a tall glass case, and I keep some things in there, but I kind of rotate out um, and then I'll either recycle it, donate it, or uh, give it away to family but it's been a while since I've given anything away really most of it I just take apart and just redonate it because if I'm not going to use it I mean think about it this way y'all some people say that I shouldn't do that but if you think about it this way you may be one of those people who goes in the same thrift store where I donate and you might be able to find all the goodies that I throw in there right mm -hmm. so you would probably be happy to find that stuff and I just had to start thinking of it that way you know if I don't need it anymore, it doesn't need to be just sitting in the basement, right? Let's make room out with the old and in with the new. If I'm going to use it, great. If it's only used for the intention of teaching you how to do it, then I can uh, move on to the next and bring you out some new things. Think about it. If I make three to five projects in two videos a week, that is a lot of decor for me. And I cannot possibly use all of that in my house, right? And by the way, for those of you who say, um, I'd really like to see your house. I bet your house is beautiful. No. It's like a mechanic who has a raggedy hoopty that he drives around. That's what it's like. I um, just took my Christmas tree down. Uh, now, the decorations and stuff came out came off in January, but the tree has been sitting there until about four days ago because I was busy and I didn't have time to take it down. I would just look at it and walk away. Sometimes you just have to look at it and walk away. Oh, I see what I'm doing here. I'm putting those little tails on there. This is still a, a cute idea, I think. And I have done this in a couple of little crafts. But I don't think I've done this lately. But I like the idea of taking the little faux tails. Or I don't, you could, I, it's not a bow. There's no loops in it. But they're just extra pieces of fabric. And you can bring, or ribbon, you can bring that color combination throughout your whole project. Now, they're not spaced 
you know, uh, as they should be, and there's a big blank spot over there where I have too much greenery, again, you live, you learn. And I think you can see by looking at this wreath, although I think it was pretty, it is a lot different than the ones that I make now because practice, I practice a lot. I do. I practice when I make things for you guys so I can show you, you know, how to do it if you want to do it. So now you can go and make this exact wreath, but you can make it your own. Did y'all hear that Dollar Tree is going to be going up on their prices again? Oh my goodness, I can't. Okay, so it looks like some little Dollar Tree Easter or springtime crafts here. These little signs, and they're still making these little signs with the, with the beads on the handle. Some beautiful 3D stickers. That was blurry. Mm -hmm. Here's some more. I don't know if they still have these, but they still put out 3D stickers, and they have good selection. You can also get little packs of paper at Dollar Tree, but mine, I got this one on clearance from Joanne. And then the one on the bottom, I got at the thrift store. Very cute. Love the patterns in this. It's very sweet and summery looking to me. All right, project number one. Let's see what I'm going to do. I'm well, using my metal ruler here to open the back of it. You know, sometimes you can peel these off so easily and sometimes you can't. But if you can't, you can always sand them, spray them with a little water and scrape them off. Or you can watch me struggle because apparently I thought that was pertinent for this part of the video. And we're pulling and scraping in. Okay. And probably the whole time I was doing that, I wasn't even talking. So you were left in silence watching me struggle. But now I'm going to, oh, I'm sanding it now in very high speed. I don't do this anymore either. I don't ever do super high speed on my videos anymore. I think that it interferes with the, the feeling I like to try to get in my videos where people feel a sense of peace and happiness and comfort and joy when they watch my videos. I want to be sure that um, I continue with that feeling. I also try to reflect that in the music that I choose. I use Epidemic Sound and I love the options in there. So many different options to kind of get the right feel for what you're doing. I can choose kind of a spooky music for um, dark cottage core or academia. I can use a fun music for spring. I can use, you know, Halloween. They have Halloween music. Um, this is not a sponsored video, but because um, people have asked me, uh, you know, told me that they like the music choices. I do take time to make sure that I'm choosing something that I really think suits the content in the video. Uh, I think that might be why people enjoy to uh, listen to the music while they're watching the video. I know I do. I like that. And I think when I'm watching a movie even, the music does add a different element. Now, why did I need tape and a glue stick? Who knows? Who knows? I could have left that out. That was not necessary. That did not have to happen. Um, but I'm using my ruler here and see now I have a little lump in the middle of it where the tape is. So I don't know what I was thinking. But we'll cover it up with stickers. You know how we do. I'm going to sand. I have been doing this forever too because it's such an easy way to get a nice manufactured looking edge, I think. I love that. Very cute. And the yellow, I think the yellow plaid looks really cute behind this too. So coordinating my colors, trying to get something that's going to stand out. Uh, that's another thing, like with my thumbnails, they've really changed a lot too in the past few years. They used to be um, a little different. Like I would show every project that I do in the thumbnail. But I don't do that anymore because it's, it's about, you know, if somebody wants to watch my video and they see what it's about, uh, in a title, then they can come and watch, right? You don't want to be giving away all your trade secrets. Okay. So that's how that one looks. I think that's cute. And that's definitely, I would say, a beginner project. Definitely. All right. Now we're going to make, oh yeah, that's right. In this video, I think we make a little, um, a little messy bow. Yes, I think so. 
And all three of those ribbons came from Dollar Tree. Almost everything I used to get came from Dollar Tree. Um, in the beginning, I had a couple of things that I thrifted and then I learned because I ended up with way too much stuff. It's so tempting at a thrift store when you pay by the pound to just buy everything. Because you think, wow, I couldn't get that for that price. I couldn't get that for that price. But then what am I doing? You know, all I'm doing is hoarding up a bunch of stuff I don't need. Somebody else perhaps could have used it, right? Well, that's true. But there are some things that I pick up like baskets and fabric and deco mesh and the wreath forms, that kind of stuff. I definitely pick up when I see them. I have found glue guns and glue sticks that have not even been opened. The glue sticks, that is, not the glue guns. I have found tools, um, picture frames, furniture bits, um, glitter, glue, chalk paint, believe it or not. Um, and I find apple barrel paints all the time. You know, I think maybe people get them for... If I had to imagine maybe school supplies for their kids or there's a project they have to do so they get certain colors and then when they're done with them, they just donate them. Well, that works for me, right? Now my channel is a business so I can buy more things than I used to buy. But there was a time when I had to, you know, look for sales and discounts and hand-me-downs and, and that sort of thing too, for sure. So we're going to do another sticker project. Look at that cute bicycle. And the pansies. I saw some pansies uh, picks at Dollar Tree, by the way. Y'all, they were pretty. There's not like a whole lot on the stem, so you'd probably have to get two. So it would be like $2.50. But you can make some nice little arrangements with them. All right, so y'all know these triangle boxes. They probably still have them. Um, sometimes they pop off fairly cleanly and sometimes they don't. Again, with the peeling and sharing that with you. Sharing the struggle, apparently, is what I was doing. So I try to get as much as I can off. The reason I do this is if you're going to add anything to it, you don't want lumps and bumps. And if you try to decoupage on it on top of another paper, it may wrinkle and bubble underneath. So you need to do a clear surface, a clean surface, you know. So I am just going to wrap it though, and I don't think I'm decoupaging this. Go and put this around here. This reminds me of a scarecrow. Trimming it out, and it looks like I'm just going to wrap it and glue it down. And this will be the back, but if this is going to be the back, you need to be sure that you paint it, because that is ragtaggly looking right there. Protecting those fingers. And look, I used the correct fingers. What has happened to me, y'all? I'm using the wrong fingers now. It's just silly business. Keep it going, keep it going. It has been almost 28 minutes. If y'all are still here with me right now, please give me a thumbs up in the comment section. And, and I'll know this video is not a complete failure. I just thought it would be fun to do it a little different. You know, look back on videos that I haven't seen. And by the way, I have not watched my old videos in a long time. I intentionally loaded these videos into my editor without watching the content so that I would be watching it freshly with you like it's the first time I'm seeing it too. It's certainly the first time in four years I've seen it, right? Or almost four years. So, uh, yeah. Okay, there's definitely other ways to finish a corner than that, but it worked. It worked. So we went on. We went on with it. Oh, and then I'm just going to cut it off. That's okay. Now, oh yeah, we can put our little bicycle down there. And it fits nicely down there in that triangle. Uh, there was a time, y'all, when I did a lot of tear trade type stuff and small decor stuff. Because, you know, with like a like farmhouse decor, you have little, little pieces and collections. So I tried to... Uh, kind of do that with my craft so that they would fit into that decor and I think I did pretty good with that but the problem is it ends up looking if you use too much little bitty pieces it looks like a bunch of tchotchke and a little more maximalist I guess and I don't like to have too much out at one time making maybe some bigger pieces and letting them stand on their own that might be the thing that you enjoy more than making a bunch of little stuff but if you have a tall tier tray these things would still fit 
You could put it in your kitchen window. I mean, there's still a lot of purpose for these things. And these little crafts like this are really good to, if you're going to save them, uh, if you create them and then you save them for holiday time, take them to the nursing home. People love this kind of stuff. And there are plenty of little people who just never get any company. They never get a card, a phone call. And something like this could really bring a smile to someone's face because you did it with your own two hands. And that's special to some people. It's really special. And I think it says a lot about the character of a person when you can do something like this and put the work into it and then, you know, donate it. Give it to somebody. Now, some people won't realize, you know, but some will. Some will realize the craftsmanship that goes into it. So I'm wondering, do any of you who watch my channel, do you do a different type of crafting than I do? Like, or do you sew? Do you crochet? Do you do something totally different than I do, but you watch my videos anyway? I just wonder. I just wonder. Because I have some people who watch my channel who say that they don't craft, but they like to hear me talk. Or they want me to, you know, they like to have somebody keep them company. They feel like they have somebody there with them. Just wonder, is that you? Are you that person? It's important to me that I welcome everybody to this channel, that everybody feels comfortable and safe here. So you're not going to ever hear me talking about politics. You will never hear me talking about religion in any way, shape, or form. I'm not going to be discussing anybody's gender or um, religious preferences or lack thereof. I don't, I don't. I don't do that. If you're a good person and you're here because you need some support and love and you need some encouragement and you are willing to be here and play kindly in the comment section with other people, then you're the person who needs to be here, right? You need to be here. And there are certain videos I watch too just to keep myself company when I'm working. You know, it's totally okay. And look, I didn't have pansies, but I thought these little pieces of hydrangea would match pretty cute. And then I had some little yellow flowers and I put those in there too. Because it's kind of dark up there in the top. And then we brought a little light in there. Not bad at all. Just cover your back up, y'all. All right. Look at that little overlay on the screen. How fancy. I used to do that. Y'all used to do it. But now I realize it gets in the way. So I've uh, corrected that. There's the other one. Again, it's kind of jerky. It's not very smooth movements. Still, I think there's some value in the project. What do you think? Okay, y'all. Who loves Granny Sheik? Get ready. You're going to see it in this video. All right. So, you know, after holidays, they throw out cards and stuff uh, that are not relevant anymore. Well, I got a box of cards that were bound for the landfill. I got these cards. I didn't have to pay for them. And I thought, let's use them. I really like that they have laser cutouts on them. I think they came from Dollar General. I really don't remember. I think it was Dollar General. But anyway, um, yeah, so I decided let's use these beautiful prints on the front in some type of a project. I would do something different now, but because I wanted to kind of stick to that Dollar Tree uh, inexpensive vibe, I went with some Dollar Tree pieces to show you how to use some cards. So if you have a card that is not, maybe your card doesn't have, um, maybe it's not new, maybe it's something that you've had in a box somewhere and you really like it or it's sentimental to you and you want to keep it. Pull that thing apart and use it in a craft, right? So that was my main purpose in this video. They, the projects themselves did not turn out as nice as I hoped that they would. Like I envision things a certain way and then sometimes they just don't turn out right. But I try, I try though. See if I'd have had a heating tool at that time, I could have taken the sticker off that bunny and saved him. But I think I cover it up. Okay, so here's some of those little box pieces that you could get from Dollar Tree. It's like a picture frame. It is very crooked. It is just crooked, crooked. Um, we're going to use those as bases for these. And here I am trying to fix the card where I tore it. What a pretty card, though. 
I really like it and it's actually got some stitching in it. So I think it's cute. I don't think it's bad at all, but it is certainly not centered. I should have taken that frame part off and fixed it because, yeah, it's way off center. It's even bothering me to look at it now, y'all. Yeah, it is, it's bothering me. Well, let's see if I do anything to try to fix it. All right, I've got some little paper flowers here. We can fix that little hole in the bunny. I'm trying to find some things that'll coordinate with what's going on. And these are paper flowers, I think. Paper, yes, they're paper. And I still have a few of these left. I'd love to be using all my Victorian stuff, so probably gonna see if I can drag those back out and do that. Just add the little flowers on there. Not a terrible way to cover up a bobo, right? It almost looks like he is jumping through the flowers. That's what we're gonna say. We're gonna say we did it on purpose. Okay, so that one wasn't too bad, but still not centered. Not centered at all. Don't even ask me what I was measuring there. Oh, look, I'm straightening it up. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna trim it off. I don't even have this cutter anymore, I don't think. The little edger, because I got one that is uh, Fiskars, I think, and has a sharper blade. Go on this box, same thing as before. Since I like that paneled look, I didn't even bother painting that. You can just leave it just like that. How simple, right? How simple. All right, so now we gotta do something to fix the fact that the card is smaller than that section. So I'm just gonna take some lace and I am just going to make like little pleats in it to almost make it look like a, you know, you can buy the trim pieces. It's already got a little pleating in it or it's stitched where it will curve. You know, I could have done it that way, but I thought, hey, this is pretty cool. I've never done this before. You do it all the time with a sewing machine, but I can do it with the glue gun. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm showing you that I learned something new, apparently. But it is very granny chic. I don't know a lot of people who would be necessarily into this style. I think it's cute. And don't get me wrong, I think it's cute, but it's not something that would fit into the decor in my house, even then. Um, but again, I always tell people who watch my videos, I encourage you to make it your own. If you can find something in the video that is interesting, helpful, useful to you, then that's, that's what it's about, right? I always want to inspire you and encourage you to make something your own. Definitely don't have to do it like me. You know, you definitely don't. Whatever brings you joy is the right way to do it. And that's what I want for you. I want you to have joy in your life, whether it's through crafting, whether it's through um, just coming over here and listening to me chatter away. You know, that's, that's okay too if that brings you some joy. Totally fine. All right, so, oh yeah, this, I love this little piece right here. It's so pretty, and I'm down to just a very small amount of this ribbon left. It's got little pearls on it, very pretty. In fact, I think I used some of this. Did I use some of this on a project I did this spring? Maybe? I can't recall which I used, but um, yeah, I think I used it on a little, let me see. I did. I used it on a little floral arrangement. I sure did. Now, I cannot remember what I did in the top, but that gap right there is bothering me. It is really bothering me. More hot glue. I'm overlapping where I made the little pleats and overlapping the gray section so we don't see it. Keep a going. But you know what, though? I call it granny chic because I really do know that my grandmother would have loved this. She sewed. She loved lace. She loved pretty things. And it is pretty. I mean, I think it's pretty. Definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but that's okay. You don't have to like everything I do. You know, I probably wouldn't like everything that you do either. But I encourage you, if you like it, that it's perfect. Oh, looks like a bow. There's a bow here to save the day. So I'm going to just, uh, this looks like a very easy little bow. Oh, yeah. It's the perfect size to fill that in too, y'all. So I didn't do too bad with that, did I? It's just one of those projects, you know, you, if you record your projects and you watch them back, there are just some things that you do that you're like, eh, eh, not, don't love it so much, but 
you know how it is. And you learn a lot. See, I learned that a bow can cover up a big boo-boo. And that's what I'm going to do and put that bow on there. We do that all the time as crafters, you know. We have little mistakes, we have little mess-ups, and either we go with it or we correct it. You know? Those are your options. Easy. But it doesn't have to stay, it doesn't have to go to the trash. We work on it. And I still say, this would make a cute little gift for somebody. To hang on somebody's little door at an assisted living facility, in a nursing home. Even if somebody's in the hospital, it's so tiny, it wouldn't take up any additional space. And y'all, I'm actually liking this project a little bit more as I'm watching it than the way I remember it. It's really not that bad. Look at that. What are we going to do with this bird? Oh, yes. A little block in the middle to hold her up so she doesn't squish the bow. I still use this technique. You got to put something in there to lift it up so I don't squish the loops in my bow. And then I'm going to turn the bird backwards because she matches one of the eggs. Well, two of the eggs, actually. I think it's really cute on this project. Okay, y'all, it's growing on me. It's growing on me. It's very cottagey. It's cottage before cottage was a thing, I think. Maybe that's what it was. Okay, so here's the third one, and that's it. I'm going to measure it. I think I'm trying to see if I can actually sit this down in that inner frame piece. I believe. Oh, y'all, that clear mat that's on my table, those actually come from uh, Dollar Tree. They're cutting mats, and they, they do pretty good for you to cut on top of paint on. I think they come in a set of two, if you can still get them. Yeah, so I'm going to put that right on the inside. Y'all can still do this. They still sell these little boxes, and they have all kinds of cards you can get for like 50 cents, I think. They're not going to be the ones that are that look handmade like this but you know they'll work this was probably the easiest one and i didn't even get my measurements right but i put it in there anyway so that's three ways that you can use cards um and i have used cards in other projects and halloween and all kinds of christmas especially all kinds of projects same thing here i don't have a setup space yet you can see my table top this is a <laughs> This is a pop-up table that, you know, folds in the middle, and it has the uh, metal legs, and I had it so long that it had a crack in the middle that I had to put foam and tape over so that when I cut, it wouldn't dent in the middle. Y'all, I'm telling you, you got to start somewhere. All right. Oh, this little project I still like. I still think this is pretty, and I would definitely still call this something that is cottagey. So, relevant maybe for today. So, I know the little Hello Love came from Dollar Tree. The sign here actually came from Goodwill. I did not pay $8.98. I got it at the pound store. Pay by the pound. It's got a little damage on it, but sometimes when you have like ink marks or pencil marks, you can just lightly go over it with a sander, and it'll take those little scuff and scratches off of it. So, that's kind of what I try to do here. And you can also paint over pieces like this if you like. Apparently, I wanted to show you every bit of that. Now I try to skip forward so you don't have to see it. Yeah, when you sand something, be sure you wipe it off. Look how pretty, though. This little sign will layer nicely on top of this sign, and the pinks match. Look at that. Now, doesn't that look like that was supposed to be married? Of course. Well, it looks like it belongs together. And you have the options. If you want to put greenery on something like this, you can move the sign up. You can move the sign down. You know, you can put like a little swag on the top. You can put the little swag under the bottom of it. Totally up to you. Using some hot glue. And that's a very old glue gun I had in my hand. And I will put these here. Y'all see those little clippers in the corner there? Those little bullnose plier nail puller things in the right corner? I still have those. And believe it or not, I found another one. So now I have some blue ones too. Who sits? They're still going. I'm telling you. I didn't pay, but maybe... I think I looked when I looked these up, they were like $15 each or something like that. Roughly, because there's no marking on the red, the red 
putters down there. There's no marking for me to tell where it came from, but um, yeah, they are definitely workhorses in my crafts, definitely. And I do recommend them. Okay, so looks like I've got some lamb's ear pieces. Those were thrifted. Those little roses, I think those came from Dollar Tree. I'm not entirely sure. Y'all may hear me sipping. I have got my Cafe Caramel Atkins iced coffee over here. My daughter bought me these and they are very, very good. It has 15 grams of protein and only one sugar and they taste delicious. They're really good over ice too, but I was in a rush this morning to get this voiceover done, so I'm drinking it right out of the carton. Nice. Okay. By the way, the little finger protectors I have also had from the beginning. Still have them. I lost one somewhere, and then I went and bought another pack. So I can protect more fingers now, or protect fingers that I have no intentions of actually putting in hot glue, as I like to do here on this channel. If you know, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Like a cat with tape on his feet. Okay, now I'm layering my greenery together. As y'all know, I like to do that. It would have been a better idea to make a little swag with this and then add some glue or use a stapler to put this in place, to keep it in place. But you can use a little bit of paper there to help hold it, everything um, in place. And this did stay together until I disassembled it myself. But I didn't have it in any weather or anything like that. It was just downstairs with me, so it lasted fine. And then I'm gonna add the pretty little peachy. I'm not a real big um, pink person. I appreciate all colors, of course. I definitely do. Uh, but I've never really been real big on pink. But if they move a little more toward a mauve color or a warmer tone, like a peach, I really like that. And I think that it looks okay here because it has sort of a, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think the tones in the flower and the tones in the, the board look okay together? I think they look pretty good. And this is another one of those things, you know, if you use like a, a cheap glue, a cheap hot glue, you can pop things off and peel it off and use stuff again all the time. Now they're not going to give you the hold like some things would, but, or like a Gorilla Glue and a glue stick would work, but you know, it'll work short term, you know, I wouldn't want to sell anything with a low quality glue, that is for sure, because um, people may get upset. Oh yeah, this is some of that tubing. Um, they still make it now, but I haven't seen it in this burlapy looking texture, which is what I really like. I see a lot of it in like the colors of their deco mesh, so like the sparkly red and sparkly blue. And now at Halloween they had uh, solid black, and that was nice. But um, yeah, I really like this one. This one I think I got at. Uh, I think I got that at Hobby Lobby. Why was I thinking I got that from Dollar Tree? That's on a Hobby Lobby spool, isn't it? Hmm. And I don't have any more. It's all gone. Okay, so I'm taking three different size little bows and I'm just stacking them together. Very easy. I'm sure there's other ways you can do this, but again, I was learning. I was learning right along with uh, everybody else who's watching my videos. I've always made it kind of clear what my intention is though, and I've told people, you know, I'm I'm honest about things. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fib about things. You're not gonna hear me or catch me in a lie about where I get my supplies or how I get my supplies or um, how I do things on my channel. It's just no sense in it. Why lie about stuff? Just be honest. You know? Just be honest. Anyway, if you lie, eventually it's going to double back on you and you're going to have to explain something somewhere along the line. So just be an honest person. No sense in lying. Doesn't make anybody any any better of a person and it doesn't really change anything. It's just talking to be talking, right? Like you probably think I'm doing right now. Talking to be talking. No, I'm here talking to you. That's right. We are crafting. We are learning. We are encouraging. And I think the bow turned out pretty darn cute, if I do say so myself. 
and I used uh, a little block to raise that up just like I did in my other one so it wouldn't be sunken back in there. Another way you could have done this is to use just like attach a little block of foam to it and just put your picks into the foam and that would have worked nicely too. My mother informed me that I say nicely a lot in my videos. Yep, thanks mom, appreciate that. Now I'm going to put a, it looks like another bow on the top. Oh yeah, that's definitely not from Dollar Tree. Mm -mm. It looks like a Hobby Lobby thing to me. Okay. And now I can just tie this on. And I could have just made the bow right over the string that was on there as well. Um, and saved myself a little bit of time. I can look back now at my projects and see. You know, back then I thought I was so smart about the stuff I was doing or I thought because I was learning that that's, that was the only way to do it. But um, you, you get more experience than you realize, you know, let's try some different things. Let's see what we can do differently. And that's how I learned in my crafting that, um, you know, there are lots of ways to make something pretty and lots of ways to make something your own. And uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be done one way. Why do we feel like, as adults, we need permission? Why do we feel that way? Is it because as children we needed permission a lot in our life, and so we kind of still feel like we need that? I don't know. Well, if that's the case with you, then I give you permission to explore your creativity, to make something and make it something wonderful and put it in your home and have some pride in it. Okay, y'all, Spring Cottage. This, I think, was from last year, possibly. And we are going to use... What did I do with these napkins? I love these napkins. We're going to do a little bit of Mod Podging. Different table setup you see here. I think I have a different camera at this point. Look at these napkins from Marshalls. Paid full price. Y'all should be so proud. I never want to do that, ever. But I did because I thought it was worth it. It's beautiful tissue paper. Beautiful, beautiful, deconstructed paper towel. So we're going to make some bunnies. I love Mod Podge. I was working with little bottles back then. Now I am a... I am a ambassador for Plaid. So I can get Mod Podge from time to time. And they did send me a box of stuff that I can use. And I have not ran out of Mod Podge. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to get those things to use on my channel. Now, I am just looking, there's so many different little clumps of flowers and bunnies in here. So what I'm doing is, rather than cutting pieces and putting it on and then working from there, I decided, hey, let's find some, let's find some pieces that I really like and do that. And I thought I was going to be cute and do this like I was seeing people do. I didn't like it. I did not like it. I did not like the way that looked. And I did not like the way it smelled. So I changed it up. I, you know, I wanted to do it because I wanted to try. You got to give things a, a chance because you don't really know what you like or don't like until you try it, right? So I, I'm, I'm giving it a chance here. So now I'm going to change it up, change it to a little, another little section of flowers. Got more yellow in this one. Looks like little daisies. Trim it down a little bit and then sand it off. It's best to wait until your projects are dry. You'll see me sometimes with a project that's not quite dry, and that's just because I'm trying to get that content out there for y'all to watch. So, when you're watching the videos, it's better for you to listen to what I say rather than everything that I do. Um, but there's a purpose behind the way that I do things, right? Because I make content for a YouTube channel, so I have to be able to do things as quickly as possible. All right, so now we're moving along. I'm going to work on the next little bunny. Cut it down a little bit and then sand it off. Now, you can fussy cut if that's what you want to do, but why? You can save time just this way. And so, that's what I'm going to do. You can find little cutouts like at Dollar Tree to use for Easter things. I don't know if you can necessarily find these because these were uh, something I found in the thrift store at the bins or the pay by the pound. So now we're making little tails and look, I'm using these cute little baby breath scraps of flowers for a little fluffy tail. 
cute y'all if you don't want it to be that wood look underneath all you have to do is paint that bunny white and let it dry and then the colors will really pop but i was going for something rusty okay so this is another one of those projects that i sort of i didn't love i didn't love and as i was making it it could have been one of those things that i took apart and just didn't even use in a video but you learn right you learn and i'm going to tell you what i would have done differently on this project so this is a window that i got at the thrift store it's just like a decorative little frame thingy and i'm using some of this what is this it's it's not a contact paper necessarily it's one of those things that you use on windows like a privacy whatever um why did i use hot glue it just was eaten right through the plastic and I'm using it upside down. But the reason I thought I would use it upside down is because I didn't want the sticky to be on the front. But I wanted it to be translucent. Y you see where I'm going with this? I put the little sticks on the top and then stapled them because I didn't want the plastic to tear. So I was trying to keep that from happening. Give it a little more support across there. And so there's my little frosted, frosted glass look, right? I took a piece of plastic that came off of some cutouts that I had and just put that over the top so we could get rid of all the sticky. It just looks junky in the back to me, right? It could always be trimmed up and cut out, and I do trim it up, you know, to make it look a little bit better. But it doesn't quite fit the frame, and the look is a little more Victorian, but the frame is a little more farmhouse or rustic looking. So to me, it just... I mean, the idea was there, but it didn't really gel in my mind like I had hoped that it would. And there's a little gap in the side, you know. I, could, I feel like I could have done better. So here's a little flower market bucket. And my idea was, you know, you hang Christmas wreaths out at Christmas time and you hang them up on your windows and you have your decorations or your greenery or your candle in them. And I thought, well, why couldn't we do that for spring? So have a little spring bucket and attach that to the window and have some florals in there. Very cottagey looking. I thought that would be so pretty. So that is the look I was going for. So I'm trying to find where I want it to be on my window. That's just a little bit too low, but I'm going to use a, a uh, zip tie here and attach it. I'm just kind of threading it between and because that's not attached to the little wood bars that go across the little dividers, you can just slide it up under there. What am I doing? Okay, I guess I was done with that project. No transition or anything. And we're going on to the next, I assume. Okay, so I've got two picture frames. I don't remember what I did, y'all. Some plaster chalk paint. Another napkin and a box. Cardboard. Cardboard. I'm cutting out a piece of cardboard. Oh, I must be doing something framed. Yeah, um, leftover cardboard pieces from shipping boxes and such are, are good to use, like for the back of projects. If you, if you need some backing or something to put it on, rather than having to buy the canvas, you can actually do something like this. Since this is being not Mod Podge, but taped down, I went ahead and used it right over the brown. I'm gonna get my little corners folded up and neat. Fold it and press it down. I really have to find these napkins, y'all. I'm not sure what I did with them, but they're so pretty. Now I'm using just my little press here, and I'm going to press it out to get my wrinkles out. It's nice and straight. Pretty and flat. Okay, so now I'm layering the frames. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to put the smaller frame on top of a larger frame. And it is kind of recessed, I think. The one in the back looks like it. I'm not sure. Yeah, it has like a little bit of a recess in it. So we're going to make this look like one better looking frame by stacking them together. You would want to use something like wood glue 
now, or Gorilla Glue. If you want this to be a permanent hold so that it doesn't come apart if it's something you want to have in your home forever. But for me, changing things up is the name of the game. All right, I probably had two coats of paint on here and let it dry. I also did the inside. And then I can flip this over on the back. And look how recessed that looks. I like the look of it. We're going to go around it with the sander and give it a little rustic look. I think this is very pottage looking, very pretty. I still enjoy it, and it's one of my easier projects, I guess. Um, but I no longer have it. I did not keep this one. This, this one got um, donated. You know I love to kind of make things look old. I like vintage. I just, I really do. Antiques, vintage, things that have some history. You know? And I like to make things look like they do too. Alright, so there she is. Now you can cover the back and make it nice and pretty. Oh, uh, those are my scissors. Those were new at the time. I'm still using the same two sets of scissors that I got from Arteza. And they're good scissors. Um, nothing in this video is sponsored, by the way. I'm just talking. We're just talking here today, right? We're talking and we're learning together. We're visiting. Maybe I'm in the background while you work, right? And look at my little crafty self using a paper clip as a hanger. I don't even remember doing that. But she's cute. Cute, cute. All right, now it looks like I have a some Matte Mod Podge and a little clear looking pedestal. And I have sprayed it, looks like, and it is more matte now. And I'm chalk painting it. The reason for the Matte Mod Podge underneath was almost like a sealer so that this paint would cling to it and uh, I would hopefully not have to do as many coats over this black. So I'm just going in on here, again with the fast forward. I mean, does anybody really like it when it's in that speed? No, I don't think they do. It would be better just to skip it, in my opinion, than go that fast. Going, going, going. Oh, and the music is one thing that has changed, too, because I did use um, music from YouTube Studio. They actually have um, some music in there. But it used to be completely free, and it is no longer completely free from my understanding so um yeah i mean i pay for my subscription in another service and i like it so i'm gonna keep it okay now we got one ply of that napkin we got mod podge on there and i'm gonna make a pretty little tray i do not recommend you try to pull on thin napkin like this um, get a brayer and just kind of get it down that way work your little wrinkles out see the difference when you put it on top of that white background than it was when we put it on the brown wood that's the difference it makes because you can see right through it so it looks like i'm going to cut off a little bit of the excess and then i'll probably be sanding around the remainder of it if you do this then you have all that extra paper around the edge that you can use for whatever you like oh no that I didn't sand. I cut it. And now I'm sealing it. Okay. Yeah, if I would have sanded this, I would have gone through that white paint onto that black tray. It's cute. I've made a, a quite a few trays in the past few years, too, that I, I really like. Risers and trays, you can use them for just about anything. Now, this is not something we would eat off of, but, you know, if you want to put some flameless candles on it or you want to put a little bunny on it for your Easter decor, that would be cute. And here it is all dried up. And it looks to me sort of like a milk glass. You know, well, you know, you can't see through it like milk glass, but it kind of looks like it. It's a little hobnail, the little details around there. I think it looks cute. It's sealed. Nothing is peeling off of that. So this is now when I started playing around with setups and I could actually kind of film it a little bit better. Still shaky, still not the best. Um, there are the little wild pieces and sprigs that I have down inside of that bucket. Put the little motivational sign up there because I do believe in you. 
And I think sometimes we just need to hear it. Sometimes when we're inside of our own head, we don't realize that we're important and how much we mean to somebody in this world. But you should know that you are important. And I do believe in you. And I do believe that you can do everything that I do. It just takes practice. That's not too bad, huh? Here's another one from 2020. Look at the little bunny and the mouse. Cute. All right. So it looks like we're going to do something with some burlap this time. I've got some ribbons from Dollar Tree. Thrifted burlap. I know that for sure. This is a Dollar Tree sign up under there. Dollar Tree lavender. Back when it was a buck. I got it in a dark purple and a light one. And we're out of focus because I was using a phone to record this. Still out of focus. I thank God every day that my husband bought me a camera to use. Um, he bought me that one year, I believe, for my birthday or for Christmas, and it has made all the world a difference. If I would just stay in the, uh, in the viewfinder, I still managed to get out of it. So here's that pretty picture, and the picture is what inspired this because I really liked it. I thought it was pretty. We're going to take this apart. Take it out. And we're not going to put the glass back in because nobody wants the glare, right? And it makes it more lightweight. This is one of those, like, a um, worker... What do you call these, y'all? A worker wreath? It's already got the little pieces on it. Uh, instead of having to take a regular wreath and put your pipe cleaners on, they already have... Um, the wiring on it and it happens to be like a green color too so you know it works i'm going to start by putting my burlap down and twisting it in and then it looks like i'm measuring okay at the time y'all i had a tape measure right on the very edge of my table where you could not see it and i would pull it down and measure out my fluffs and my loops and everything by that tape measure underneath but I'm pretty sure these would have been maybe maybe 10 inch little loops that I'm making because they're I actually should have used something like a 20 inch instead of a what is this like a six inch wide piece of burlap something thicker would have been better for a huge wreath you know, you can get away with the thinner stuff on a smaller form, but it kind of, you have to use twice as much and you just as well start off with something bigger anyway. Um, also something that I learned after having to take wreaths apart and redo them. I still try to do wreaths as budget friendly as possible for people, but there are still times when I look back over a wreath that I've done and said I should have used an extra roll, but then that would have added to the price of it and I try to keep it as low as possible but I still tell you what you can do to make it better. And I hope that that's helpful. Because what if you only have two rolls, but you needed three? If you can make those two rolls work, then that's good. All right, and it looks like I am continuing to go around here where you can't see a thing I'm doing, but I'm sure as I was in the video talking, I was telling you what I was doing. I at least try to keep everybody up to date. Apparently, I'm unwinding the entire thing before I put the next loop in. And I think at this point, I'm kind of going back and forth, back and forth from the outside to the inside, outside to the in. Yeah, that's what it looks like I'm doing. And these two little pieces of burlap are actually slightly different colored, so it gives a little variation in it. And then I'm fluffing out all of my little loops here. So, are you a burlap person or a deco mesh person? Because burlap to me is much easier to work with. But some people don't, you know, don't like the more rustic sort of look of burlap. They like the shiny and exciting, glittery looking deco mesh. But deco mesh can kind of be a pain to work with at times. I try to make it as simple as possible when I show you how to make wreaths on my channel, but uh, yeah, it can be a pain in the wrong. It really can. If you get a good quality, not so much, but if you get, even at Dollar Tree, sometimes you can get a roll that's, that works really well, 
and then the next roll you have is just frayed and just impossible it's constantly coming unraveled really honestly y'all you're better suited to buy your deco mesh at another place and pay a little bit more for it just to avoid the frustration but i'm still gonna be using the ones from dollar tree and the ones that i find at the thrift store just to show you that it is possible right nothing is impossible we're just gonna keep on working keep on working by the way, I wanted to take a moment to let y'all know that I am working toward a goal of 100,000 subscribers so I can get a silver play button. Um, so I qualify for that uh, on October 31st is my deadline. I've given myself that deadline to see if I can get there by October 31st. And I'm really hoping that there are enough people who enjoy my crafts, my videos, my personality, the music, the whatever, the rebaness that they will not just watch the videos, but subscribe to help my channel. Because when my channel grows, it helps me. When I'm able to see the growth in my channel and I'm able to benefit from the growth, like financially, because I, this is a full-time job for me, then I'm able to give back more. I can do better projects for y'all. I can spend more time looking for projects to do. I can, you know, money is a tool, right? It's a tool. It's, I don't go around um, generally asking people for help because I'm the kind of person who likes to do it myself, you know, making it my own, the name. Uh, but yeah, I can't do this without y'all. I've come as far as I have with you. Um, and I appreciate that because some of y'all have been around a long time. But there are people who watch my videos. As a matter of fact, like 75% of the people who watch my videos who are not subscribed to my channel. And if you enjoy the content, if you find something valuable or interesting when you come to my channel or you come, you know, check out a video or short, um, which I'm just now starting to make, you know, those things help me. But actually subscribing to show that there's, you know, that interest and that um, that value that you get, that's what makes a world of difference. And I, I don't want to do it to be bragging, like to get that silver play button. It's like proof to me. It's like my own value is kind of set in someone else's hands, I guess, in a way, because it will show me that I did it. You know, this is something that I have worked very hard for. Um, and I do every bit of it myself. So it's just proof to me and a more motivation to me to keep going and to keep doing the things that you want to see me do. I always try to do that. And uh, it just means a lot to me. So yeah, if you're watching for the first time and you enjoy this, then it would be wonderful if you could help me grow my channel. Um, so yeah, I appreciate that very much. So now we're working with this purple. These little bunches of uh, bows that I have on here are cute, but they are really not to scale with this wreath. That is something else I've learned. So like if I'm gonna do a 10 inch wreath, I need to have at least 10 inch ribbon tails, right? Um, to put down in there. I didn't do it at this point because this is another thing that I was trying to learn. This was not, I'm not formally um, instructed. I don't have any formal instructions. I haven't taken any classes about being an artist um, or anything like that. Now, I will say though that last year, twice, a friend uh, had a painting class and a bunch of ladies got together and did that. And we had so much fun doing those things, but uh, it's not the kind of painting that I do. So it was different for me. So I enjoyed doing that. Uh, and it's not the kind of painting that I do on my channel because most of the painting you see me do is like in a thrift flip or in decor pieces that's for aging things, aging techniques and stuff like that. We actually painted uh, fairies one time, little fairies and I think dandelions. And we did one of the other projects was um, we did sunflowers those were really pretty too and we did our sunflowers on a black background oh so pretty we're supposed to be maybe getting together again sometime this spring i don't know for sure it's not like a constant thing it's just whenever they have time so that would be fun it would be a lot of fun for me to go back and do that 
Hey, if you have donated things to my channel, sent me things in the mail, um, sent me e-cards, sent me the, uh, have talked to me on Instagram, you know, anything like that, it is very much appreciated. I do see you. I don't always, um, I haven't like sent out thank you cards. I try to respond to you in comments when you tell me you're sending me something. So be sure you get your notifications on so you can see that I do get it and that I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's fun. I mean, I think everybody likes to get mail, right? Whether it's just a card to say thank you or, or to tell me, you know, what a difference the channel has made in your life. That means a lot to me too. So, you know, you don't have to spend money and you don't have to feel required to send me anything is kind of what I'm saying. I do still have like um buy me a coffee i have that i have um there are super chats and super thanks those are ways too that if you just want to help support the channel in some way you can look in the uh comment well the uh description box below and it will tell you how you can do those things to help the channel and um that in return helps me and my family as well so those are always appreciated too and y'all i do premieres from time to time you're going to see notifications about premieres in your notifications. That's why I harp on hitting the notification bell so that you can see when there's going to be a premiere because um, so many of y'all are subscribed to the channel and the chats can be anywhere from 80 something to 150 people just talking and just asking questions and seeing what everybody had for dinner and you know, um, what the weather's like and where you're from and people just chat and have a good time in there. You know, we watch the video together and uh, get to know each other. And I think that's a lot of fun and anybody who has been to any of the premieres, I know they seem to enjoy that as well. It's just a way for us to get to know each other better. I also have channel memberships and I uh, only have one tier right now and it's very affordable if that's something that you want to do. Um, I have done private or, or like um, special videos, I guess, of decorating and such and hauls for the ladies and gents who are over there in the membership section. Their membership money goes right back into the channel, so it helps me to either buy supplies or pay a power bill or a phone bill or, you know, anything like that. Put gas in the car when I'm going to the thrift store or to Dollar Tree or wherever. And that's always appreciated. See, the wreath's not bad, is it? It's not bad. It's definitely beginner wreath, though. All right, so now this is also a Dollar Tree project, it looks like. So this was a magnet. I took the magnet off. I've got some greenery. Looks like, is that eucalyptus, I think? And then this little window from Dollar Tree. This was from 2020. I think you can still get something like this at Dollar Tree. I know they make some really pretty metal ones, and I've used those in some Halloween decor that I really like. I like the metal ones much better. I thought this would be cute to use almost like a little window. Of course, I think that's probably what it is, like a what a cathedral window. I'm going to cut the little glue sections off. This was more than just hot glue. This was something else in there, but I, I wanted to make it flat so that I could attach this plaque to it. I don't know what it is with a thumbs up for me. That's, that's, I have done that for so long in my life. Is this a Gen X thing? Thumbs up? I don't know. You think about the Fonz though, and that was from before then, so who knows? Who knows? And this is crooked. I can see right now it's crooked. But we're going to leave it and we're going to keep going. Maybe it's not crooked. Maybe my work is not what's crooked. Possibly the window is not squared. Maybe that's what it is. All right, so here's another way to make a little swag to go underneath. You can just wrap the wires on top of themselves. And place them down. Cute. And then add little pieces of scrap greenery. I've been doing that forever too, y'all. I keep a bucket or a bowl nearby. And once I cut my scraps, cut my greenery, I throw the little scrap pieces 
down into a bucket. So I have little extra pieces of like berries and stems and the, see how you can just pull things like this apart with the little scraps like that. And we use those in projects and small projects all the time. I even have a drawer in there that's got bits of fabric and stuff in case I want to use it for doing some decoupage. Rappy, 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 rap. Apparently y'all need to see every bit of that. Not bad. By wrapping that jute around it, it gave me a little more space to add some glue and to glue it down. But this is another one of those things where you can glue it down but if you don't use the right glue, it may pop back up, which may pop it off. Especially since there's wire in some of that greenery and it can bow a little bit. So, you know, you just have to, if it pops off, just glue it back on, right? Use a little super glue gel or something and you'll be fine. Or some Gorilla Glue. Now I'm gonna add these little seedy looking pods in here. I think they came off of some lavender or something. And put that down in there. Are they purple? I think they are. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Lavender or lilac, something like that. I'll just put those in there on both sides. And this is a, another cute smaller piece. Thank you for a house full of people I love. Amen. We're going to call this channel my house. And I thank you. All of you people for coming to my house and of course giving me the love that you give me in the comments all the time I love it I love chatting with y'all there are times when I am busy that I may be a few days behind in the chat but just know I'm gonna get back to you and I'm gonna fill in a little extra around the bottom so I don't have a big empty spot there and be sure you think about cutting your pieces apart with your greenery, y'all. Been doing that a long time, haven't we? So this is some cotton twine. I'm still working on this same spool. After all those years, still got that same spool. And I do believe I got this from Dollar Tree. It is a good multi-purpose cord or twine, I guess you could say. And I think I'm making a bow here. I'm making a bow. Yes, we're going to make a bow here. I just looped it around my hand and I'm tied off in the middle. So tell me, yesterday was Valentine's Day. Did you have a great day? Did you do something for somebody that you love? Did you make a phone call? Did you send a card? Did you say hello to somebody? Did you talk to somebody you might have been mad at or upset with for some reason? Did you make exceptions if somebody was rude to you yesterday? So if you can do that on Valentine's Day, we should consider doing that every day, right? We should always be nice, kind, and accepting of others, not just on holidays. You know, making the world a better place starts with one person. And you know, we could be that person. Why not? I can try to be that person for you. You can try to be that person for someone else. And kindness spreads, right? I think that's a very good thing. Acceptance and love and understanding and patience with someone else is important. Matters to you, right? And it matters to somebody else too. All right, y'all, we are drawing near the end of this video if you have been with me this entire time i appreciate you so 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 very much i want to thank you for visiting with me today come back and see my videos mondays and thursdays and i'll see you soon bye